Thank Tell you. us the difference between an asset-backed currency and a fiat currency. Well, well, the fiat means that it is declared by government that this is money, it's paper and it's money, and it's by government declaration, where if you use a gold coin, uh, the value comes from the marketplace, and government can't reproduce this, so it's always exchangeable, and the people uh, uh, will accept it. If this is sunk on a boat uh, and a ship uh, now, or uh, it was a 500 years ago, you dig it up, but that's tremendous value. There will be numismatic value plus the real value of gold. This sinks, you put it to the bottom, and who, who cares? You know, this loses uh, probably 5 to 10% a year in value. Welcome. Every generation has a champion, someone who will pick up the gauntlet and do battle with the Federal Reserve. In 1913, it was Senator Charles Lindbergh, Sr. From 1915 to 1933, it was Congressman Louis T. McFadden. From 1929 to 1976, it was Congressman Wright Patman. From 1976 until today, it's been the Honorable Congressman Ron Paul, presidential candidate for 2008, and today's guest on our show. It's a pleasure to have you, let me tell you. Nice to be here. You recently wrote a piece uh, about Milton Friedman uh, on his death and uh, about how our youth are not taught anything about financial literacy and uh, also about how our politicians don't understand any of the basics of economics. Could you expand on these I, things? I, I certainly believe that to be the case. The little bit of education that the kids get in public school is probably wrong. <laughs> so, uh, but they don't really get ed education uh, in the real sense of the word. And unless maybe they're in a private school or sometimes in homeschooling, you'd be surprised. I have a lot of people in my district that are homeschooled and they're not illiterate. And sometimes they're the ones who win the spelling bees and, uh, and, and, and the other contests. So it's the public school system that has really been, been derelict. But it's a reflection of, uh, of the education system and what I see in Washington. Uh, a lot of members of Congress are now are pretty young. They come in at 30 and 40 years old. So they've been uh, you know, through the recent public school system because I think the public school system, the more the government has taken over it, the worse the education has gotten. So uh, I don't see this as an ugly ma way, but I think they're economically ignorant. They, they don't have an interest. And they don't have an understanding of monetary policy. Monetary policy has been my special interest. And uh, there's a saying goes that money is important because it's one half of every single transaction. So it involves everything that we do, whether we're selling our labor or selling a product. So it, it's most important. And of course, uh, if you understand free market economics, you realize that money and the way the money is manipulated causes the business cycle. But there's essentially no understanding of that. Not too long ago, I was talking to a, a uh, member of the Financial Services Committee, the Banking Committee that I'm on, and uh, the individual said, I heard you ask some questions about gold the other day to Alan Greenspan, but isn't it true that, uh, that we're under gold standard? You know, she, she was still under the belief that the dollar was backed by gold, and he, wow. she, she'd been on the banking committee for years. And uh, so that, and uh, th that's really the level of uh, education, but there's, there's no real interest. They do not understand how important monetary policy is and basic economics. What do you think about the availability of credit these days? Well, it's too available, too easily available, and that's part of the problem, if not the major part of the problem, and it causes a business cycle. In a capitalistic society, one should work for subsistence, and what's left over becomes capital, and that's what they say. They either reinvest it or somebody else reinvests it, and they put it in a savings account. But because of our monetary system, we have created a disincentive to save. There's no incentive to save because the dollar is constantly depreciated and we're taught to spend the money because consumers drive, drive the economy. And uh, you would say, well, if they don't save, how can you get so much money? How can you go out and buy a house today? And even though mortgage rates have crept up some, still 5% is astoundingly low. Well, it's all artificial. It's not real credit in the sense of it coming, it's coming from savings. It's coming from our monetary system, the Federal Reserve System. The Federal Reserve has been given the power and the authority 
by our, by our Congress, in contrary to the Constitution, to create money out of thin air. That's essentially what they do. They've created a system where we as politicians are rewarded by spending money because that's how we get reelected. We get we spend the money and we pass out the goods and people say, oh, yeah, he's an effective congressman. And then they give you lower taxes. Ah, oh, there's no taxes. We will just print the money. And uh, and the Federal Reserve doing this creates it in, in, in addition to the fractional reserve banking system. It is magnified. Uh, if the Fed creates a billion dollars out of thin air and puts it in as a reserve, eventually that turns into eight billion dollars. And sometimes weeks, the Fed can create five, ten billion dollars in a week, and whatever they want, whatever is necessary to fix interest rates. Uh, they're price fixers, what they are. So the the Federal Reserve makes credit available, but in a way, it's it's fraudulent and it's theft because it does have value. You know, if you go to the bank and they give you a million dollars, if we all take it, but it becomes valuable only by diluting the value of somebody else who's holding money. If there are those who are left saving money, they're being robbed because their value of their dollar is, is going down. At the same time, you get cheap credit because you get the million dollars. And of course, the people who benefit the most in this system are those who get the money first. And those are usually the wealthy people. So the characteristic of a uh, country that depreciates its currency is one that's destined to destroy their middle class. So if you're in the rich class, and you're in the banking elite, or you're in the military industrial complex, or you want, want to run up deficit because you're going to fund special interest groups, then you like the system. But it's ironic that some who believe that you have to give welfare to everybody to take care of it, rich welfare and poor welfare are literally really hurting the poor because uh, it's a tax on the poor. They don't pay income tax, but they pay the inflation tax. And it hurts the poor and low middle income especially because they end up with an inflation rate. Price inflations go up much faster than, uh, uh, than uh, those of the rich. And, and the rich usually don't care. Uh, so it's, it is a tax. And uh, the easy credit is, uh, is very seductive. Politicians love it. The people who get to use it love it. Few people understand it, and uh, I think we're going to have a collapse before they come around to uh, really thinking seriously, you know, about monetary policy and why we have to revamp it. Recently, we have seen the dollar go down sharply. I think it's going to continue, and hopefully, it'll wake the people up and find out you have to have honest money and follow the Constitution because it says only gold and silver can be legal tender. Yes, and it specifically outlaws bills of credit, right? That's absolutely. With, and what is a Federal Reserve note? It is, it is nothing more than paper money and a bill of credit, uh, and, uh, and yet if you have a, a silver dollar, yeah. if, you, if you have a silver dollar like this, you can't pay your income tax with this. Matter of fact, this says one dollar on it, mm -hmm. and it's legal tender for one dollar. It doesn't make any sense. But if you have right. a Federal Reserve note, even a Federal Reserve note, you can't take and pay your income tax on. They want it electronically, you know, this whole notion uh -huh. that, uh, you, you, that you have legal tender. If you have a privately minted silver ounce and you tried to uh, transact a, a business transaction with that, you can go to jail. I mean, you're, you're breaking the law. And yet the Constitution said gold and silver are legal tender, and it's the only thing that could be legal tender. So, you know, we have a lot of problems in this country, economic, monetary, foreign policy, and yet we fail, once again, back to education, we fail to look at the guide. Not only is it a guide for us and advice for us, it's the law of the land. It's the rule of law. It's the Constitution. So you say, well, you know, let's say the economy gets much worse and uh, we have a lot of inflation and, you know, all kinds of things. Well, we have to do something. Just look to the Constitution. We'll find an answer. If, if somebody thinks, well, we're doing too much overseas and spending too much money and our foreign policy is not successful, look to the Constitution. Is there any authority for Congress to give the president authority to start wars when he pleases? That doesn't exist. No. And, 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 and we do that endlessly. So it's so simple. The Constitution is so neat and, and, and thin and easy, easily read, and yet nobody we, reads it. We, we ignore it.